Hey what's up guys? As I mentioned previously, I'm not really making videos for this channel, but I will for special occasions, and this is definitely a special occasion. So if you haven't heard, RenderMan21 is out, and you can go download it from their website. You can get the non-commercial version for free. And this is a pretty big update, and makes a lot of things available to us that we didn't have before. So one thing that's pretty awesome is the Pixar Surface Shader. And this is a production shader that they've used in Finding Dory and the Piper Short and things like that. So I guess we don't have any excuse anymore to not make awesome artwork because that's now available to us in Blender. We also have a lot of improvements for lights. Um, we don't have the surface collection that's for the other rendermans, but we do have uh, faster denoising and lots of, lots of cool things. And just in addition to that, the plugin for Blender has improved a lot. So that's really nice to see. And I just want to give you a super quick overview for it. So the developer, Brian Savory, has videos on his own channel that I'll link to in the description below. Those go a lot more in-depth and can show you the, the guts of RenderMan for Blender. But in this case, I just want to make you aware of what's there, uh, and so you can go and explore it for yourself. So here I just have a simple few materials set up in cycles. You can see that they're a little bit somewhat complex. Uh, we've got color ramps, we've got volumes, and we have some textures. Now one thing that's cool in the latest version of RenderMan if we just switch our renderer up here. So if you don't have RenderMan, then again, go watch Brian's videos. He has a video covering how to get it and how to install it and all of that good stuff. So here we have some cycles materials and in the materials panel over here, we now have a button to convert all cycles to RenderMan. And that's going to try and duplicate those nodes in RenderMan nodes. So that's pretty interesting. And of course, it's not going to be an exact conversion, but at least if you have you know textures and things like that, it's going to pull those in. So you can see that the actual you know, surface properties haven't really been mimicked all that much, uh, but the textures actually have. So that just makes it a lot easier to convert previous projects, so that's pretty nice. Let's just go ahead and delete some of these materials and start, start fresh. So if we create a new material and add RenderMan node tree, that's going to automatically start with the Pixar surface, which is sort of the uber shader of RenderMan. Uh, you may have remembered in the last version, there was the Pixar Disney shader, which you can still get. If you press Shift A, it's under uh, BXDFs. So instead of Cycles BSDF, uh, it's BXDF. And then it's Pixar Disney right there. So this one's a little bit more simple to use, but it doesn't have quite as many options. Uh, so this new Pixar surface is now the default. So let me just assign it to the others really quick. All right, and sometimes when you're doing these updates, uh, you have to stop IPR and restart it again. But that's pretty quick. And just the whole workflow of using RenderMan and the IPR and all of that stuff has definitely sped up and just seems more fluid and um, a little bit less clunky than the previous version. So that's definitely nice. So here we have lots of different options and we can enable individual aspects of this shader separately. And it's a little bit easier to work in the material uh, panel over here, I found. So if you expand some of these sections like the diffuse, we can change how much diffuse this object has. And of course, the color and roughness and all that stuff. So even if we turn the diffuse all the way down or you know disable it completely, we can still play with other things like, for instance, the primary specular. If we increase that a little bit, and this is pretty interesting, uh, especially workflow wise, because that way you can actually disable the diffuse and see exactly where your specular highlights are coming from and just you know, hit things one at a time, uh, which is pretty awesome. So we can enable both of those at the same time. The specular is pretty much just a glossy shader, but the cool thing about this is you have multiple layers of that. So you have a rough specular as well, which is the exact same thing. It's just the automatic um, roughness is a little bit higher. But this is really nice, especially for some materials like car paint and things like that, which seem to have multiple layers of specular. So that's pretty neat. So of course you can do that here. And if you really want to get super physical, you can switch the specular Fresnel from artistic to physical and uh, plug in a bunch of physical numbers there if you are really into PBR. So in addition to that, there's also a clear coat, which is pretty awesome, especially for, again, car paint or you know, wood with a really glossy finish. So that's really nice and just adds a yet a third layer of customizability. Under that, we have options for the specular clear coat. 
iridescence, which is super fun to play with, uh, just making things really nice and colorful. That's pretty sweet. Fuzz, which is sort of like the velvet shader, and if we turn off diffuse and enable that, uh, looks like we'll have to restart IPR. Oh, of course I have to enable it. That would be helpful. Um, so if we increase the gain, then you can see it just sort of, sort of adds those uh, fuzzy highlights like the Velvet Shader and works in combination with the Diffuse. I'll turn off my Speculars. Underneath that we have the Subsurface, but I don't think that works quite with IPR at the moment. Uh, we get a bunch of little interesting squares. Okay, cool. For some reason it wasn't working before, but now the subsurface scattering is looking really nice. And this is cool, especially because uh, it can be denoised, and the denoising actually works surprisingly well for the subsurface scattering. So we have that. Um, we have a bunch of other options for scattering. I haven't looked up what the single scatter does in the documentation quite yet, so I'm sure it has a really nice use. Uh, it looks like it's definitely faster than subsurface scattering, um, but definitely has a different use there. Glass, of course. So this is really cool, just because it's all in the exact same shader. Now, of course, we can add glass individually, and you know all of these components separately under the BXDF. We have you know glass, hair, diffuse, everything like that. But it's nice to have it all in one place, and just makes it super easy to to use. So, of course, uh, we also have glow. That's pretty neat. There's all of that good stuff. But in addition to that, one thing that just makes it easier for me to work is in the world panel we can now add environments right in here so you can either choose environment or sky sky is going to try to simulate the sky at a particular point in time and place so this one's pretty cool because it's actually the default is right in seattle so if we stop and restart it's going to simulate the sky at that particular point in time so that's pretty neat but we can also just load in an environment map really easily let's just go And once you load one in, you've got to restart IPR. And it all just works. So that's really nice. And you can see that the glass shader is absolutely gorgeous. So that's awesome. And uh, a couple other things. Again, we have the denoising like that we had in the last version, but it's a little bit better now. So that's pretty sweet. So we can take a look at that in just a second. I generally switch the render type from Blender to Image Tool, so that it renders right in here and we can see things as it's rendering. But uh, beyond that, yeah, it's it's really nice. Um, I found one thing when I was playing with glass beforehand that if you end up getting a bunch of black spots, uh, generally it's just because you don't have enough um, specular depths in some objects, so if you increase that then uh, it should be looking a little bit better. So let's render something out really quick. I will set the max samples down to something really low, like 5. Set the minimum samples to 2. And I'm going to render this out and denoise it. So we're going to take a look and see how, how well the denoising does with, you know, pretty complex refraction and reflection. Um, let's actually give this plane a different material. So I'll press the 3 button to make this a single user, and I'll just make this a regular diffuse. See, I'll make sure that the diffuse gain is all the way up. There we go. That way we can just see some fun caustics as it's rendering out, because those are always cool. Or it actually looks like those are just transparent shadows, so let's go down to the integrator options and click allow caustics, and then stop IPR and render this out. So here we have a really low sample count, and let's see what the denoising does to it. Alright, not bad, not bad. So, definitely a little blocky, but, I mean, we threw five samples at it, so of course it's not going to be perfect, and it's it's looking really smooth. So that might help speed up your renders a little bit if you're playing around with that. It takes, you know, a minute or so for it to actually denoise, but compared to how many samples you have to throw at it to get a completely smooth result, um, it's definitely a awesome, awesome tool. 
So there's lots of other stuff in this new version of RenderMan. I definitely recommend going and checking out Brian's channel. I'll put a link to that in the description below as well as to the documentation. And so with that, happy rendering.